press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. In this episode, we shall discuss the meaning of minimum lease payments, MLP in short, under Accounting Standard 19 leases. AS 19 suggests that minimum lease payments is sum total of lease rent agreed and guaranteed residual value. See, in a lease arrangement, the lesser gives a right of using the asset to the lessee and in return, the lessee will be making payments to the lesser. So what is the mutually decided lease rent between the lesser and the lessee? That lease rent which has been agreed, that is the first part of the NLP. The second part of NLP is the guaranteed residual value. Question arises, who is giving the guarantee? See, the guarantee can be given either by the lessee to the lesser or the guarantee will be given by any third party on behalf of lessee to the lesser. But what exactly is the guarantee about it? There is a misconception that guaranteed residual value means some amount of additional cash which is payable by the lessee to the lesser when the lease arrangement is coming to an end. No, guaranteed residual value is not payable in cash. Rather, guaranteed residual value is payable in kind. What do we mean by that? See, when the lease arrangement will get terminated, the lessee will have to return the asset back to the lesser. So what should be the value of that asset when that asset is returned back? That value of the asset is what we are suggesting as the guaranteed residual value. The lessee will use the asset for the lease tenure. The lease tenure comes to an end. Now as a lessee, let's say if I am a lessee, as a lessee I will return the asset back to the lesser. So when I sign the contract today, okay, when I sign the contract today, I am guaranteeing the lesser that see when the lease tenure will come to an end and then I will return the asset, the minimum value of that asset shall be what I have guaranteed. That is what we call as a guaranteed residual value. And that is the reason I am saying that guaranteed residual value is something that is payable in kind. It is actually the minimum value that we are guaranteeing to the lesser when that asset is returned back to the lesser. One may wonder that why do we have such kind of a clause in a lease arrangement? Please understand this. Whenever you are entering into a lease arrangement, the legal ownership of the asset is with the lesser. So legally speaking, the lesser is owning the asset. Let's consider a lease arrangement for a car. Let us say the lesser has a car which it wants to give out on lease. Now, this car is leased out, let us say, for a period of three years. Now, if you are the owner of the car, obviously you will be using that car in a very careful manner. But now when the lesser is giving you this car on lease, as a lessee, you are not the legal owner of the car. You know, it's very much possible. When you don't own that particular car, you may use that car carelessly. See, this is the risk that the lesser is taking. As a lesser, I am giving out this car to the lessee. What if the lessee does not use the car carefully? What if after three years, that car is written back in such a bad shape that it actually causes a loss to the lesser? So what the lesser suggests at the time of signing the lease agreement itself, it says that the lessee should guarantee, let's say, 2,50,000. So the lesser is suggesting to the lessee that, see, I am giving you my car on rent for three years. After three years, when you return back the car, the car should have a minimum value of 2,50,000. You know, if this guaranteed restful value is not there, for example, the lesser does not say anything to you. As I said, if you are not the owner of the car, 
very high chances there that because I don't own it, as a lessee, I may use the car recklessly. I will use it so carelessly that within three years, the value of the car will deteriorate like anything. But the moment a lesser says that, see, when you return the car back at that time, I will value that car or I will sell that car in the second hand market. And when I sell that car in the second hand market, minimum of minimum, it has to fetch me 250000 So now if you are using the car recklessly and let us say after three years, you return back the car and then the lesser is selling the car in a second hand market and let us say the lesser gets only 50000 right? You use the car so badly that it is now only worth 50000 so the lesser gets only 50,000, but tell me as a lessee, how much you had guaranteed? You had guaranteed 2,50,000. You know what? The difference of 2 lakhs will be payable by you as a lessee. This is the price that you will have to pay if you do not use the leased asset carefully. And that is the reason we have this particular clause with respect to the guaranteed residual value. So now you know that when I will return back the car, it should be minimum worth 2,50,000. If it is less than 2,50,000, the difference is payable by the lessee to the lesser. In other words, we have to compensate the loss suffered by the lesser. But remember, it's a minimum amount, right? For example, if the lesser sells the car and the lesser gets 3 lakhs of rupees, lesser will not give us 50,000 rupees, right? So this is only with respect to the minimum amount that we have guaranteed. If the lesser is getting something extra, then that is not going to be paid to, uh, paid to the lessee. But if it is sold for a price less than the guaranteed residual value, then you as a lessee will have to pay the difference. So this is basically done to protect the interest of the lesser. It is done to ensure that the lessee is using the asset, not owned by it, in a careful manner. So the sum total, as I said, of these two, I will consider that as the minimum lease payments. What more? There are two categories of expenses which are excluded from the definition of MLP. Let's understand that too. MLP excludes expenses such as repairs, maintenance, insurance, etc. It is quite possible that the lease arrangement is suggesting that the lessee has to incur expenses like repairs, maintenance, insurance. The lessee is incurring these expenses, but these expenses do not form part of the MLP. See, in MLP, we include only those items which are payable towards the asset. When you are incurring repair expenses, maintenance expenses, insurance expenses, what you are getting in return is a service. So payments towards services are not considered to be a part of the MLP. What more is excluded? MLP also excludes what is understood as contingent rent. What is contingent rent? Contingent rent is any rent which is dependent upon some future uncertain variable. For example, the lease agreement is suggesting that the lessee has to pay to the lesser some percentage of sales or some percentage of the units produced or some percentage based on maybe any other variable. That kind of rent it is understood as a contingent rent. We will be excluding contingent rent also from the definition of the minimum lease payments. For example, a lease arrangement suggests that every year the lessee has to pay 1 lakh rupees plus 5% of sales. This 1 lakh rupees that we are supposed to pay, that will become a part of the lease rent agreed and hence it is a part of the minimum lease payments. 
but 5% of sales that you are also going to pay that will be considered to be a contingent rent that shall be excluded we understand contingent rent to be more like royalty rather than lease rent and that is the reason it will be excluded press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update